movies and walk the red carpet and do interviews and meet some of his favorite actors. And give him a round of applause for that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, he did really well with that. They was really impressed with him. Um, when he went to audition for it, he actually went in for um, Young Slave on the auction block. Um, mm -hmm. But after he did that audition, they offered him Frederick Douglass. And so that was uh, a great opportunity for him, and he had really enjoyed it. Uh, about two, three years ago, he got braces that were still in, and we did have an orthodontist appointment today, and he still is in the braces. It will never end. Mm. Um, but when he <laughs> went into the braces uh, with kids, they don't really like booking kids with braces. Um, and so he went from doing a whole bunch of auditions and a lot of roles to almost nothing. And so he said, well, I'll just make my own films. And so he started a production company called Imagination Lunchbox. He has three films under that. Um, One Nation, which he did when he was eight. Uh, Naga Pixie, which he did when he was nine. And um, the latest one is called Agent Hollywood, which he did when he was 11, I believe. And so they have traveled the world at film festivals. They have screened everywhere between here in Baltimore to Largos, Nigeria. Um, and he has won, I think, a total of something like 12 or 13 awards for his film. All at 13 years of age. All at 13 years of age. And okay, he's an excellent student. Oh, so that's shout the best out part. to Our Lady of Victory School um, off Wilkins Avenue. They are accepting enrollment if you're interested. He's in the National Junior Honor oh. Society. He is... Um, he just let me think. We, we right. got a prayer of love for now, that's for sure. Anthony, Michael, pull that mic up just like I have it right here. We're going to get you on this mic and talk about your career. How does it feel to be all up in theater and writing movies and plays and doing all the stuff you're doing? How does it feel? Honestly, it feels like I'm just where I belong, where I'm, in, where I'm meant to be. Mm-hmm. And so you, you started with your love for reading books? Uh, just like, because I'm an only child, so as a kid I would watch TV and I would run around the living room acting like I'm the characters from the show, uh -huh. and then my mom explained to me, and then I was watching a movie, and I saw a character that I saw on a TV show, and I was very confused, and so my mom explained to me what an actor was, and I said, that's what I want to do. She said no, so I told on her and told my grandmother, which is her you mother, <laughs> and so her mom made her let me try it, and she thought I was going to crash and burn and fail, mm -hmm. but I ended up succeeding, and so... It's sticking with it. It's sticking with it. That's the key to success. Success. Preparing yourself and also sticking with it. What grade are you in now? Eighth. So we have an eighth grader who's always already done three films. So tell us. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank. Thank you very much. Uh, who are some of your favorite actors? Uh. Oh, just one of them. Who's your Who's your favorite actor to go see in the movies? I don't know if it's my favorite, but one of like, a, like a person I like to watch is probably like. Maybe like Mark Wahlberg. Okay. And what kind of movies? What kind of movies do you really like? Like action adventure, comedy. Okay. Not a big fan of horror. My, my either. Let me ask you this question. What, did you see Black Panther? Yeah. What do you think about it? Um. This is Anthony Michael, our young playwright, or what do you call it, movie producer, director, actor. <laughs> I mean, I liked it. Mm -hmm. It was a good movie and everything. But I wish there was more of him. Black Panthering, kind of doing more action and okay. flipping and mm -hmm. fighting type of stuff like he was doing in Captain America Civil War, more yeah. of that. Okay, very good. So what's what's next for you? Uh, honestly, just make it through the eighth grade year and get to high school. That's right. That's very important. What's your favorite? Some of your favorite subjects? Uh, math, science. That's really good stuff. It Those really is. Top two. So tell us about the relationship. How mom has nurtured your career. Well, uh, she's like, she she supports me, and, you know, if I want to do something, she'll take me to do it, or she'll help me find auditions to do, those kind of things. And so that shirt says, I'm not lazy, I am P physically conservative. conservative, so you're saving energy. Yeah. yeah very yeah. good. So, Dr. Hobbs, tell us a little bit about, since you're here, let's talk a little bit about your wonderful work and, and your wonderful book. Uh, tell us a little bit about your book and your project. Uh, well, what I do, in a, addition to, I work for the U.S. Department of Education and Policy for Federal Student Aid. But on the side of that, um, I deal in history, and so I specialize in um, the 19th century and the 18th century, um, mostly focused on Appalachian Virginia in that area. Mm -hmm. And I um working with uh, two museums right now down in that area with um, improving their rhetoric of enslaved people and that history. And so we're trying to get the museums to go beyond 
Um, there were slaves here. They worked in this kitchen. Mm -hmm. They dusted this yes. floor. Simple stuff. You know, simple things. They woke up. They worked. They went to sleep. And so, what the work that I've been doing is trying to make them people. So we're giving them personalities. Yes. We're giving them yes. habits. Yes. We're talking about the things they enjoy. We talk about what they did when the you know enslavers were not around. We're talking, and you know, you can get a lot of that from tracking down their descendants and uh, figuring out what they're doing because history repeats itself. And so what their descendants are doing today is likely what they were doing then. And so that's really the focus on it. And then we're trying to expand their history that it doesn't start in slavery. It starts in uh, whatever African country that they came from. And so what we do is we kind of look at um, uh, the region. Um, slave sales inventories of that region, you can get a sense of the ship that they arrived from and then from that you can trace it back to the African countries that they were taken from and then when you tell the history at the museum you start there. So you talk about um, um, the culture that they came from, the habits they would have came here with. And then I like to take that information and link it between then and now. And so I have this presentation that I do that people really love while I show that uh, some of the cultural practices of the African American community today is a migrated version of what they do or what they did in West African countries. So for example, if you look at certain tribal religious dances, um, the fast feet movement, the dancing around, the jumping around, it looks a lot like the modern day breeze mm -hmm. break, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and that's likely where it came from. It just migrated over here with us. And so that's kind of the point of all of the work that I'm doing. And then the book that I wrote was uh, More Than a Fraction is about my own ancestors who um, whose history that I discovered. And the book is not written like a textbook where it gives you facts. It's a creative nonfiction. So I put their story into a story because mm -hmm. they were well documented with the um, Virginia records, mm -hmm. Virginia Tech records, and um, uh, Federal Archives and the Freedmen's Bureau. And so they have a very detailed story. That I'm and that's really great because um, we just came back, about 20 of us, we took a journey uh, up to New York and we stopped in the Harriet Tubman home in Auburn and the Frederick Douglass home in Rochester and while we were in Auburn we met uh, descendants of Harriet Tubman mm -hmm. and they too had just written a book it's titled Beyond the Underground and they wrote this book from the family's perspective mm -hmm. although the lady said I could have did it in a scholarly academic fashion she wanted to tell the story in easy, friendly mm -hmm. language of what everyday life was mm -hmm. for the enslaved and as we know freedom seekers had a lot more to their lives than the slave masters both would have told us. So here you go. You got a young fellow playing Frederick Douglass. Your mom is writing historical books. So we need to invite you folks to come on down if y'all in town on September the 1st through 3rd. So you can actually see Anthony Michael where Frederick Douglass lived, where he worked. He built five, five houses that still stand today. So when you, I'm going back to the sun for a moment. When you were doing the um, abolitionist and you had a, a part of that for Frederick Douglass what stood out to you about Mr. Frederick Douglass? Um, that even as a young boy he was going through so much and experiencing so much and like even through like cold he didn't have like warm clothes to go through and you know I guess that was okay to be for during the heat it, you know he wouldn't get too hot but he was still experiencing a lot, witnessing a lot, people getting whipped every day, getting whipped himself. Yes, and unfortunately, sadly, we still have too much uh, in our schools now as we look at children who are being bullied. I think I saw one on TV this week and a little girl was just crying about how people were treating her. And I think during the times of slavery, people of color were just treated very, very inhumanely. But today, children like yourself, you guys just got to practice good behavior with each other. And hopefully that's what's happening at what school you said that was? Our Lady of Lords? Our Lady of Victory. Our Lady of Victory. Very good. So in closing, um, how do people get a, in contact with you to get a copy of your book? And how do they follow the young actor-producer, Anthony Michael? Yeah. Well, you can, um, you can get a lot of information on um, the website for Anthony's production company. So that's www.imaginationlunchbox.com. Imagination Lunchbox. Imagination Lunchbox. Imagination, because he picked the name when he was like seven, and Lunchbox, because that's the name of his dog. So, <laughs> we'll see how he feels about it when he's 35, and his company is still called Imagination Lunchbox. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Imaginationlunchbox.com. Um, there's information there about the book more than 
a fraction. There's information there about all three of his films, mm -hmm. um, including the trailers for the films, and we keep that updated on when his films screen at different film festivals. And when he works on his next project, um, we'll put that information up there also. So we keep that updated. He does have Instagram, and that would be um, also Anth Awesome Anthony 5 And his Twitter is just Awesome Anthony Zero. Um, and Facebook is Anthony Michael Hobbs. He has other social media, but those are not really business ones. Those are like the stuff that the kids are doing this, these days, so musically and all that stuff. And he probably doesn't even have his real name on it, so we'll leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> they don't do musically anymore? He's looking no. at me funny. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Snapchat? Yeah. Oh, so, sorry. Anthony Michael, even though I don't know how many 13-year-olds um, are listening today, but if some parents and adults are listening and they have 13, 14 year olds in their households, what would you say to those parents to inspire young people like yourself to be able to use your creative side? Uh, we know you gotta do your books, you gotta do your books, you gotta do your homework, you gotta clean your room, but talk a little bit about what has meant to you to be able to explore this, this whole creative side. Well, if you have kids who like want to do stuff or like they want it, they have big dreams, they want to do things, but they, they're just not doing it, just kind of push them and help them to just do it. Everyone can dream, not everyone has the courage to do it. But if your kid doesn't want to do something big or stuff, just help them along with their dream and help them encourage and encourage them with what they want to do and help them and help guide them along. So one last question, because this is a fascinating interview. Or interview. 